But today I'm going to show you how you can achieve this effect. Popcorn kernels have been stuck in my molars for the past two weeks. Um, that's a Rocket Man reference. I have no idea if you're gonna know what I'm talking about. So the people who do know what I'm talking about, you're the real OG. And for everybody else, hopefully I find the clip. Got it, got it. There it is. What? what? This popcorn kernel has been stuck in my molars for the last two weeks. <laughs> What's good, you legends? I hope you're all doing dope. Today, we we're talking about what I just found out. Everybody has been trying to put in motion blur into Premiere because apparently Final Cut Pro will flex on us because they have a built-in motion blur thingy, which I am jealous about. But I have figured it out and I hope that this will help you guys out. It's not something that Adobe created and they put it into Premiere and now you can use it. It's not anything like that. Enough freaking talking, bro. Let's just hop into this thing and hopefully you'll catch it. Sponsor me who makes. So like I said before, I started this off as an effect that was kind of like in a displacement effect. And if you want to see that full video, you can click up there in the card. But looking back, I noticed that it is a little too much, so I decided to dial it back, and I realized that it creates this motion blur effect. So all you got to do is edit your video the way that you want to, and then there's an area where you want to add some kind of motion blur. You're going to cut the end of one clip, and then the beginning of another clip. That's the best way that I use it. Then you need to copy and paste the clips of where you want the motion blur to take place and place them directly above the original clip. And then you put those bad boys together, you nest that clip, and then you're gonna go up to the opacity. This is where the magic happens. What I typically do is I put it at 40% and then depending on how intense you want that motion blur to be, you change the scale from either 100 to 110, 115, 120, whatever it is that you feel is going to look the best. For me, I typically do it very subtly, anywhere from 105 to 110. And if you wanna make it more intense, you can go ahead and increase the opacity as well to 60 or 70%. Don't go beyond that. I think it looks kind of cheesy by the time you do that. But you're going to have to experiment with the scale and the opacity to get it just right. But if you're not going to do that and you want the shortcut 40 and 106 to 110. You're welcome. However, if you want to step up your game, you can also use a mask on that bad boy. So basically, you go to this clip, and then you can just draw a mask around whatever it is that you want to focus and what it is that you don't. So if you look very closely, the building doesn't have any motion blur, but everything on the sides does. You can also see a little bit more pronounced in this clip right here. So there you have it, guys. It is that simple. You go to the clip, and then you copy that clip, and you increase the scale and lower that opacity, throw in a little bit of masking if you want to get fancy with it, and boom, you got yourself some motion blur. Suck on that final cut. I'm just kidding, that it probably doesn't look as good as theirs, but I mean, it was worth a shot. I think I've gone through like three cans of this while recording this video. <laughs> but anyway, I think that that is it. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe because that's what all the cool kids are doing. Follow me on Instagram at Keyboard King if you want to see all the behind the scenes and all of that jazz. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Boom!